My vision is to engineer tiny robots that can roam through the body to detect and treat disease. To interact with our cells, these systems should be as small as a few tens of nanometers, which is about a thousandth of the width of a hair. These systems, however, do not quite look like these illustrations we often find in public media. Instead, they may look more like these nanostructures that indeed, with some further engineering, could be used as medical nanorobots. They could, for example, act as a carrier to deliver a toxic payload to cancerous cells, or locally release a sensor to measure um, a disease state. Different from engineering large robots, though, with hard metals and joints, the, our design principles are determined by phenomena at the nanoscale, and the materials we use are much closer to the materials we have in our body. Lipids, for example, are part of every cell membrane in our body and are a fabulous building block for our nanorobots. Because we can engineer conditions in which these lipids self-assemble to nanoballs, so-called liposomes. And during this process, we can add drugs or sensors. But how can we now remotely control them? How can we trigger their release? Well, we can add, for example, magnetic material and make them respond to magnetic fields. Magnetic nanoparticles dissipate locally heat when exposed to fast-switching magnetic fields. And we can use that to melt our shell and locally release a sensor. Now let me give you an example how we can use that mechanism in cancer diagnostics. A patient diagnosed with cancer mostly will take biopsies that are then analyzed by means of histology. However, when we're looking at dead tissue samples, we can miss important information about the tumor activity in vivo. So what you see there is a tumor microenvironment, and it's rich in specific enzymes that can actually tell us about such a tumor activity. For example, about its metastatic potential, which is the most crucial piece of information required in therapeutic decision making. And we can design molecules that can be cut by these enzymes and shed a marker acting as a sensor. Now we designed nano shells that can travel through the bloodstream. And because the tumor vasculature often tends to be leaky, they can actually, because they're so small, extravasate out of the gaps and accumulate at the tumor site where we can externally um, activate them with magnetic fields to locally release their sensor. And now when the sensor hits the enzyme we're looking for, the marker is cut and released and it's small enough that it can travel through the kidney where we can then detect it in the urine using paper microfluidics like a pregnancy test. And with that strategy, we could distinguish two different aggressive forms of cancer which can help clinicians to decide which therapy works best. Now that we know which therapy to apply, we're facing the next challenge. How can we effectively bring the drug to the tumor tissue? Drugs simply diffuse, which is an inherently slow process. So can we somehow add a motor to our nanorobots, our nano delivery systems? Well, it's hard to fabricate it at a nanoscale, but seems nature has a solution for us. What you see there is a bacteria cell that has a helical tail and actually a nanoscale molecular motor that is propelling it forward. So this inspired us engineers to basically replicate this and 3D print helical tails out of a biodegradable material coated with a magnetic material and now we basically apply rotational magnetic fields to have such a motor. And with that approach we could show in a tissue vessel model that we could double actually nanomedical transport twofold. And in our next project we moved even further using real bacteria and synthesize tiny magnets within their body. They use this for navigation, the Earth magnetic field, but we use this trait to control whole swarms and basically give them nano balls as a, as a delivery backpack. And it's not far-fetched to use actually real bacteria in the body. Thanks to synthetic biology, new therapies are emerging that make use of genetically modifiable viruses, bacteria and cells. And in my lab, we're interested in, in leveraging these magnetic bacteria as a wirelessly controllable living therapeutic platform. And with that, I hope I could convince you that we are at a time where we can indeed engineer tiny machines of living and synthetic components that have the potential to open up a completely new era in medicine. And this only has become possible because of the convergence of several disciplines that inform the design, synthesis and control of these machines. Thank you.